The, the left wants you to think that they have a corner on compassion. They don't. They're not capable of it because they're followers and they're weak. I want to sort of go back to what we were talking about the left, the culture at large, but apply it to everyone listening. You know, we kind of do this at the end of the end of the show. Uh, how does this apply to you? Because a lot of this is one thing Jordan Peterson has really tapped into, uh, and I'm very, very fortunate to to have this platform that we do. But um, I think one of the greatest evils today. So let me start with this, and I see it from the left almost exclusively. Is they've ingrained it into people with a brilliant bait, bait, bait and switch, by the way. Um, they they equate envy with empathy. And this is one thing I actually disagree with a lot of intellectuals out there on the right, is this idea that the left has a general stronghold on compassion and that the right has a majority stake in industriousness or productivity. That the left is compassionate to the weak, that the right is, is, is cold and sort of hell-bent on survival, uh, you know, survival of the, the, the fittest, right? The, str the, the strong survive, conquering. A lot of people on the right sort of concede this. Um, it's a lie. It's a lie. I do not agree with it at all. I see modern progressive leftists as the least compassionate people, potentially in, in modern society, uh, potentially in, in non-modern society when it comes to uh, uh, comparing it to other societies who, if you, if you look at the people who are burning people alive, eh, relatively progressive. I know, I know people think that that's because words don't make sense anymore. What, what, what drives the left today isn't compassion. It really isn't. It's tapping into envy. We see it from everything from their proposed tax plans and their slogans of eat the rich to the way they score children's soccer games. Namely in that they don't. They don't score them at all. This is one thing too I hear, eat the rich. We, you can see these on bumper stickers. You can see these with, with the Antifa members. You can see these, these slogans on flags. You don't want to eat the rich because you're compassionate. It's because you're envious. No one has a sign out there. No one has a three-piece rocker that says, eat the rich, because they're compassionate people. So they didn't say, hey, how can I help out my fellow man? Eat the rich! It's because you're an envious little bastard. Or bitch, we don't want to be sexist here. Hashtag yeah. you yeah. too. Inclusive. You don't refuse to keep scores for children's sports, not because it's compassionate. We do it to cater to envy. Children will envy the other team. They'll envy what the other team has, whether it's points on the board or oranges at the halftime. I don't know if soccer has halftime. I don't follow it. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a three-year-old girl or homosexual from Greece to hear Nick DiPaolo <laughs> say it. So ra here's the thing, though. This is what really bothers me, and then we'll get into how it applies to your life. Rather than be compassionate to the team who's earned their stay, who's earned their keep, you steal their victory, you steal their points, and you hand it to the envious. That's not compassion to me. That is simply a political ploy to tap into envy. People screaming, eat the rich, are not compassionate. They're selfish people. The middle class is another thing. There was a study that came out recently. I heard it discussed. We'll probably talk about it next week on the show. It's not disappearing. I hear this a lot. They say, well, 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 with $15, they did it in Australia, and they're okay, $15 an hour. They did a living wage in this, this country or pick whatever province, whatever. Re just pick your pick. They go, so it worked there. It didn't implode. Well, hold on a second. Are they in charge of the world's national defense? Also, uh, we have the highest average income outside of Luxembourg, which is really basically a tax haven. So would you rather be the society where you have a ton of people with zero skills making $15 an hour? Or would you rather be a society where people who did go to college, who did learn a skill or trade, have the highest average income? What's more compassionate? The middle class is not disappearing. Uh, but there is some truth to when the left says that the middle class, most of you watching middle class, you're often left behind. You know when that happens? When we create policies predicated on envy. Obamacare, great example. Poor people got subsidized health care because they wanted it and couldn't afford it, namely. Most of them weren't working, productive members of society. Some of them not even legal citizens. Do you know who got hit the hardest? Not the wealthy, they can always afford it, right? But the middle class. The middle class who weren't such screw-ups that they qualified for the subsidy and they weren't wealthy enough to afford the skyrocketing costs to subsidize the premiums, the skyrocketing deductibles. There's an irony for you. That's not compassion. That's stealing from the working middle class and yes, the working wealthy class. I don't care if you're wealthy or middle class. I, th I care that you're working. I care that you're a productive member of society and I want you to reap the spoils of your work. We took it from them, we gave it into the hands of the people who are envi envious. Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, let's look at that. Subprime, how often do you use subprime low market? Predatory lending. Have you heard that predatory lending? Like someone's going, hey, hey kid, Psst, come over here. You want a giant sum of cash that I know I'll never get back? I've got them right where I want them. What happened with this? Who got screwed? The middle class, the housing crisis. People talked about skyrocketing home costs at this point in society. I remember, yeah, it's true. 
So it's also because homes are twice as big, by the way. When people talk about skyrocketing home costs, your house is on average twice as big as your grandparents' house. But I digress. But guess what? The middle class Americans who responsibly saved 20 to 30% down for a down payment and they diligently built good credit, they didn't need the subprime loans which the government was effectively enforcing, right? When people say predatory lending, no one, no one lends money knowing that they won't get it back. They only do it when the government forces them to make that loan and of course backs it. Then it's free money on the table. But guess what? The middle class, the people who responsibly saved and scraped and lived diligently, they didn't need the subprime loans. Who did? The people who saved nothing. The people who had no credit. The same people who were envious of those who did the exact opposite of them. And when the housing crash happened and the envious, covetous old sinners were a year late on all of their housing payments, and the middle class Americans, by the way, who had scraped and saved and were ready for the market to rebalance at that point to finally buy their home, hey, I've got money down. Hey, I've saved up and the, the housing market was not friendly to me, so I rented for a little bit, but here's my time. The government said no. And the people who had no business being in those houses made out like bandits. Was that compassion? No, it was catering to envy. And so this is one thing that really bothered. You know what breeds envy, by the way? Weakness. Weakness breeds envy. Weakness also breeds untrustworthiness. It breeds betrayal. The left loves to, this is the thing, they love to vilify the strong as toxic. Let me ask you, how many times, we've talked about this, last, we talked about it last week with Gavin McGinnis. How many times have you been betrayed by a strong man or woman? How many times have you been backstabbed by the person in your life with a backbone? The person who's a little tough to get along with in your life, but gets things done? How often have they screwed you over? Let's contrast that. Think about the person, and we all know this person, who just never gets their crap together, their finances, their marriages, their relationships, the holding down of a job. They're in a constant state of crisis. I know these people. They leave everyone else holding the bag. Have they screwed you over? And maybe even if not, are they the person you would call to pick up your kids? Are they the person you turn to when you really need someone to trust? It is the weak among us who hurt us the most. And it doesn't mean that the strong cannot be compassionate to the weak, but this idea that solely because people are weak, and I'm not just talking about your bench press, I'm talking about weak of character, this idea that it, weakness exclusively means worthy of compassion, and strength means you don't need it. It's a lie. It's a lie. And, and, and it's not that conservatives aren't compassionate, it's that we don't buy into that lie. And here's the thing, if the progressive left wants to build a society that caters to weak people, to the weak, and more specifically, to the weak's envy. The left, they, they not only want a society, uh, 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 they don't want a society where strength can grow, right? This is what we're talking about. This is what we, ultimately we talked about this, we talked about the underdog theory, that why do, they, why do they love Hamas? When it's in their charter to kill all Jews, because they suck, right? Because they're weak, because they're not very good. And so, all right, we're gonna go with Hamas. They must be in the moral superior, they must have the moral high ground here. But, they want society to be entirely dedicated, di dictated, entirely di dedicated to and dictated by the squeezing, wrenching, grasping, scraping, clutching, covetous old sinners. The people who say, I can't afford the house, but I deserve it. Eh, you know what? Uh, I, I actually, I didn't score any goals, but I feel uh, that I deserve that score, so could you please even it out? You know what? I never went to college. You know, I, I never actually, I didn't go to trade school, but I think I deserve $15 an hour. Yeah. You know what? I, I, didn't, I, I didn't actually purchase insurance before I got sick. Uh, I did not save up any money, and uh, I believe it was like mm, free health care, please. Now, in contrast, strength, uh, strength, this is important to know. Not all strong people are good. I'm not saying that. Strength can breed selfishness. It can breed, it, it can breed bullishness. But it can also breed generosity. Weakness, by its very definition, is incapable of breeding generosity. The weak cannot be generous even if they wanted to. Hear that, socialists? Democratic socialists? It doesn't matter. It's not even on their radar. They're so busy getting theirs. They, they, they don't even often have a second to think about how to help others. It's why food banks go into poor neighborhoods not out of them. Of course, I understand it's a money issue, right? I understand that people with money are trying to help people who don't have money, but it's just a good example right there. If, if that's how you reacted and, and you said, my, you see class and problems entirely determined by money, the poor may not be able to donate their money. Okay, let me give you an example. But how often do you see them creating nonprofit efforts to, meaning the weak among us, people who might be down into luck financially, but we all, we all give what we can, right? How often do you hear of this in, in natural disasters? Give what you can. How often do you see poor people creating nonprofits in an effort to, I don't know, offer free marriage counseling services, help with the opioid crisis among middle class youth? I can't remember who said this recently. I, I don't remember who it was. Um, it's going to bother me, but someone can probably comment and, and, and let me know. Uh, someone said, just because somebody lives in a pretty house, it doesn't mean that th pretty things go on inside of them. I think is what this person says. I'm probably butchering the quote. Um, 
That really stuck with me. The weak can't be generous. They're incapable of it. But the strong, at least, they can sit back. They can decide what to use their strength for, good or bad. And this is what I want to see. This is ultimately what this comes down to. I want to see more strong people out there. If you're watching the show, if you're listening, and you're not doing something to become stronger every day, you're doing it wrong. And I'm not asking for people out there to be He-Man. All I'm asking is that you're stronger today than you were yesterday, and that you'll be stronger tomorrow than you were today. And that'll be by a conscious effort. I'm talking physically, emotionally, intellectually, spiritually. Every day, you better be getting stronger because the only way this world stays on track, the only way this world gets saved is by the strong among us using their strength to do right. So when I say that I don't have any time for weakness, it's not for a lack of compassion. And I hate it when people concede that territory. No, I think that conservatives are the most compassionate among us because we want to create an atmosphere that fosters strength, which we, knows, we, we know breeds life as opposed to sucks it from someone's very soul. That's what I hate about leftism. I hate, I hate that it crushes the soul, the human spirit. It's not for lack of compassion for those in need, but precisely because of it, is my point. I don't want to see the strong having their goodness stolen from them, whether it's points at a soccer game, whether it's that middle-class family who deserves to get into a home that they saved for, and by proxy, by the way, stolen from all the people who could be blessed by it. That's just something that's important. Strength. People who are strong can bless other people, whether it's financially. Think about this. Someone who's blessed financially, intellectually, even physically, they can help you move. Intellectually, they can teach you. Financially, they can be the ones building wells. So to steal it from them is to steal the blessing from everyone who is blessed through them. And what do you do? You hand it to the chronically weak, to the chronically envious. The, the left wants you to think that they have a corner on compassion. They don't. They're not capable of it because they're followers and they're weak. They don't have a corner on compassion. They have a corner on envy. And you see it right now with Google. You see it right now culturally with this kickback and the babies being put to bed who are screaming their plaintive wails. Don't give into it. Don't buy into it. If you give into it, if you give into the left catering to your envy, you give in, you're already a shadow of your potential, doomed to a life of weakness dominated by envy. Get stronger today, tomorrow, and the next day, however you can. I want to see more of you out there. Hey there, YouTube viewer. You like Samantha B? Of course not, because you've actually made it to this end card. You are a miracle of the internet. I would say subscribe or hit the notification button, but I don't really know what that means on YouTube. You might not get notified anyway, but you can join up at ladderwithcrowder.com slash mug club. That's mug with this wonderful hand etched mug, and you get to watch not only clips, but the full one hour daily show every single day. That was redundant because I said daily, but every single day, but we're going to keep it anyway because we shoot these end cards a whole lot in one afternoon. We're scraping the bottom of the barrel with this one.